Vitamins and enzymes are called micromolecules. Inorganic compounds like sulfate, phosphate, etc. are also seen in the acid soluble fraction. What are biomolecules? Any molecule that are involved in the maintenance and metabolic processes of living organism. So all the organic molecules, what we have carbohydrates, protein, lipids should be in equal proportion. Then only we call it as what balanced diet. So the term metabolite is usually restricted to small molecules. Hello everyone, welcome back to another yet another interesting chapter of your first PU syllabus that is biomolecules. So chapter 9 of your first PU syllabus called biomolecules and session 1 of biomolecules. Myself, B. Shobarani from the Department of Biology, Vidyashram Pre-University College, the Temple of Excellence. Moving on to this chapter, biomolecules, the very word itself will tell you how important these biomolecules are. I think all of us know in everyday life, we take food in the form of carbohydrates, proteins, then lipids, then vitamins, enzymes, etc. But vitamins and enzymes are called micromolecules. So all these uh, uh, constituents of food are nothing but called bio molecules. So we can classify the biomolecules into macromolecules and micromolecules. Macromolecules and micromolecules. So what do you mean by macromolecules? They are the ones which are used in larger quantity and which are bigger in size than micromolecules which are used in smaller quantity for example like the macromolecules include the carbohydrates carbohydrates proteins and lipids so micromolecules involve what we call it as vitamins enzymes and even minerals so any molecule that is involved in the maintenance and metabolic processes of living organisms are called as biomolecules. So how do we define the biomolecule? You can also call them as organic molecules, right? So any molecules that are involved in the maintenance and metabolic processes of living organisms are called biomolecules. So biomolecules include what? Carbohydrates, then proteins, nucleic acids, lipids and water molecules. Some biomolecules are called macromolecules. All these are called macromolecules. But micromolecules, sometimes for example like vitamins and enzymes are not taken in the form of food. But our body itself will synthesize the vitamins and enzymes. So they are called as what? Micronutrients. Or you can also call them as micronutrients and they are called as macronutrients. So here we can come across the uh, it is almost like you know our body is like a chemical factory so morning you have your breakfast by the time in the afternoon it is you will feel hungry so what has happened to the food all the food is broken down there is a series of chemical reactions taking place because the food what we eat is nothing but a biomolecule either in the form of carbohydrate protein or lipid and the food what we eat will help in the synthesis of enzymes and nutrients which are very much important for various physiological processes. So what are biomolecules? So here you can see the nucleic acids made up of nucleotides that is bases and pentosugars, DNA and RNA, uh, proteins, uh, for example carbohydrates, for carbohydrates which are the building blocks of carbohydrates, monosaccharides, monosaccharides. For proteins, it is amino acids, amino acids. And for lipids, it is fatty acid and glycerol, fatty acid and glycerol. So here carbohydrate, the building blocks of carbohydrates are monosaccharides. The building blocks of proteins are amino acids. The building blocks of lipids are fatty acids and glycerol. So all these put together, you call them as what? Even the nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are made up of what? 
nucleosides, nucleotides, right? Then all these put together. Here you can see the fats and uh, fatty acid and glycerol. So carbohydrates. So here you can see the carbohydrates. Here the proteins. Here the lipids. And here the nucleic acids. So what are biomolecules? Any molecule that are involved in the maintenance and metabolic processes of living organism. Biomolecules include what? Carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, lipids and water molecules. So some biomolecules are called macromolecules. So we classify the biomolecules into macromolecules and micromolecules. So what are macromolecules? Carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, nucleic acids, even nucleic acids. Nucleic acids we call them as biomolecules. So here carbohydrates, what are the building blocks of carbohydrates? Monosaccharides. What are the building blocks of proteins? Amino acids. What are the building blocks of lipids? Fatty acid and glycerol. What are the building blocks of uh, nucleic acid? Nucleotides. Then how to analyze the chemical composition then? So here we come across the carbohydrates, then the lipids, then the nucleic acids and the uh, proteins. So we call them as what? Biological macromolecules. So here here we can see carbohydrates, lipids and nucleic acids. How to analyze chemical composition? All carbon compounds, carbon containing compounds are present in the living organisms and are called as biomolecules. So organic compounds containing carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen, we call them as carbohydrates, proteins, right? So all the carbon in uh, that is organic compound that are present in the living organisms are called as biomolecules. So as organic Molecules, biomolecules consist primarily of what? Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen and oxygen. And to a smaller extent, phosphorus and sulfur. And sulfur. Uh, other elements sometimes are incorporated but are much less common. So how to analyze the chemical composition? So carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen, phosphorus and sulfur. Right. So all the carbon that is organic compound that are present in the living organisms are called as biomolecules. So all, as organic molecules, biomolecules consist primarily of what? Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen and oxygen and to a smaller extent phosphorus and sulfur. Other elements sometimes are incorporated but are much less common. Now if the tissue is finally burnt, uh, all the carbon compounds are oxidized to gaseous form that is carbon dioxide and water. So what is remaining we use the word called ash. So when we, for example when we burn wood, so what is left over it is the ash. So the ash contains what? Inorganic elements like calcium, magnesium etc. Inorganic compounds like sulfate, phosphate etc. are also seen in the acid soluble uh, fraction. So if the tissue is fully burned, all the carbon compounds are oxidized to gaseous form, gaseous form, form that is carbon dioxide and water. What is remaining is called as ash. So the ash contains what? Inorganic elements like calcium, magnesium, etc. Inorganic compounds like sulfate, phosphate, etc. are also seen in the acid soluble fraction. Therefore, See here you can see in the beautiful picture the various types of food. So the food what we take is in the form of what? Carbohydrate, then protein, then lipid. So all the different forms of food what we eat, pulses, right? All this protein will have more, milk will have more of protein than, right? So therefore elemental analysis gives Elemental composition of living tissues in the form of hydrogen, oxygen, chlorine, carbon, etc. While analysis of carb compounds uh, gives an idea of the kind of organic constituents present in living tissues. So we need food for what? For energy. And we need all these, for example, like carbohydrates, like glucose is a source of energy, lipid is a source of energy, proteins is very, very important, the building blocks of our body. So we know how important, uh, you know, there is always a wear and tear process also taking place in our body. To replace the worn out cells, protein is very important. So all these uh, organic molecules are required by the body in various forms and we take it in the form of 
food. As I said, the food what we eat will synthesize enzymes and vitamins as you know, enzymes are very, very important as they are the biological catalyst with speed and sub the chemical reaction and also we know how important vitamins are. So the vitamin deficiency diseases also we know when our body is deficient of certain vitamins, so it may cause certain disorders. So all the organic compounds may it be the carbohydrates, proteins and lipids are required for the, by the body for various physiological processes. And imagine if you don't have all this or deficiency, so you might have come across a word called balanced diet. So all the mm, organic molecules, what we have carbohydrates, protein, lipids should be in equal proportion. Then only we call it as what balanced diet. So deficiency in any of these nutrients may lead to some disorders or diseases. So all the organic compounds are very, very important. So from a biological point of view, they are classified into amino acids, nucleotide bases and fatty acids. As I said, the building blocks of carbohydrates are simple sugars or what we use the word called monosaccharides. Then proteins, amino acids. And lipid, it is fatty acid plus glycerol, fatty acid and glycerol. So therefore, elemental analysis gives elemental composition of living tissues in the form of hydrogen, oxygen, chlorine and carbon, etc. While analysis for compounds gives an idea of the kind of organic constituents present in living tissues. So but from biological point of view, they are classified into amino acids, nucleotide bases, fatty acids, right? Now, inorganic constituents of living tissues. What are the inorganic constituents? See here, you can see the different sources of food, which are high in potassium. Sodium, sodium is what? Salt. Sodium is salt. So all these are the food which is rich or the sources of potassium. So inorganic constituents of living tissues is well, for example, sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and water. These are also very, very important. As I said, the inorganic constituent in the form of minerals, they are very important for our body. So organic constituents of living tissues, namely, they are carbohydrates, that is proteins, fatty acid, glycerol, triglycerides, phospholipids, cholesterol, adenine. So as we know, for the various process, like for example, the cell wall is made up of a carbohydrate in plant cell. Animal cell, it is made up of a polysaccharide. So like that, we have different uh, cell membrane. So for various uh, process of formation also, all these organic compounds are very much important. So moving on to the next concept called primary and secondary metabolites. Secondary metabolites. So what is a metabolite? Metabolite is a substance during or taking part in uh, taking part in metabolism. These are low molecular weight biological compounds that are usually synthesized by an enzyme. Right. So the term metabolite is usually restricted to small molecules. So we use the word called small molecules. Here we classify the metabolites into primary metabolites and secondary metabolites. Primary and secondary. Secondary metabolites. So what are primary metabolites then? These are a kind of metabolites that are directly involved in normal growth, development and reproduction. So these are the metabolites which are directly involved like for carbohydrates, protein, lipids, you call them as what? Primary metabolites. These are the kind uh, of metabolites that are directly involved in normal growth, development and reproduction. It usually performs a physiological function in the organism and it is called as intrinsic function. So examples, sugars, amino acids, tricarboxylic acid, then proteins, nucleic acid, polysaccharides, all these are the uh, you can give the example for primary metabolites. So what are primary metabolites? That is the metabolite is a substance uh, during or uh, uh, taking part in metabolism. These are low molecular weight biological compounds that are usually synthesized by an enzyme. 
and the term metabolites is usually restricted to the small molecules. So we classify the metabolites into two types that is the primary metabolites and secondary metabolites. So what are primary metabolites? These are a kind of metabolites that are directly involved in normal growth, development and reproduction. So it usually performs what? A physiological function in the organism and acts as an intrinsic function. Examples you can give sugar, amino acid, tricarboxylic uh, that is acid, then proteins, nucleic acid and polysaccharides. Hope you have understood the first very important session of this chapter called biomolecules. So I'll be back in the coming session with some more interesting concepts of this chapter called biomolecules. Till then goodbye and thank you.